everybody feeling fine. There ain't no business like show business, baby. Show time. It is show time. What's the challenge of designing for a game show, especially where you have people coming on and off the stage and all sorts of activity? Yeah, there are a lot of um, logistics involved, and the first thing we try to deal with are the rules of the game, what's going to happen and where the cameras need to be and where the people need to be, and the rest of it kind of has to fall in after the function of it's solved. So you have to fix the bones, and then you can put any, you can dress it up any way you want. So. Is that particular show, is that a multi-camera or a single camera? We show? had um, 12 cameras, okay. um, and uh, it was shot over on the lot at CBS. Okay. And yeah. what's it like trying to work? Did you work with the cinematographer to really figure out the angles of the camera? Was that the, the um, video director? The video director. Don Wiener did a wonderful job helping us set that out, um, and we were able to work in previs with enough three-dimensional modeling so that we could discover the appropriate camera positions before we even moved into the stage. So it's really helpful. I know something uh, oftentimes a lot of people don't really acknowledge, not acknowledge, but they're not aware of the design of the stage. They're watching the show. Right. They're not. Right. It's not so visible. Sometimes that's indicative of a successful one. <laughs> when we've managed to stay out of the way enough that people don't notice. But sometimes it's nice to sort of shine a little bit. Do you often have to do some changes to the set or, or reconstruction or? Well, there, there's always notes. There's always um, one thing you find that we decide doesn't work. We had to add a platform here, and the background for this had to change because the set was wrong, or the dressing had to, you know, work itself around it. But for the first time, a show is being shot. That's part of the process. You kind of discover that once everything gets up on their feet. That oh wait, that guy needs to be six inches higher. Right, right. So you yeah. discover things as you as, as you build, and it's, it's part of the process. Actually, that that's an interesting point to think of. Do you have the host a little, is it generally in a game show, is the host a little elevated over the contestants or the other way around? Um, you need to be able to, the cameras need to be able to see everybody. Right. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, but often we'll elevate the contestants and not the host huh. to let them feel a little more special and have them, uh, you know, give them a little special place to be so they're comfortable there right and the host is sort of you know presenting up to them what's up next for you oh um, actually I'm working on a, a internet project right now okay. which is for internet only it's not the first one of those I've done but it's the biggest um, Frisky's cat food okay. is uh, establishing a Facebook page so we built an environment for cats to play in that, that's so, interesting I was yeah. looking at that. I, I, I get those emails because yes. I have a cat. Yeah, yeah. What was it like actually designing a project like that and making it something that you knew would be interactive with the with a feline? Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty bizarre actually. Um, but we, we we had conversations with feline behavioralists from Friskies, and we've been sort of trying to develop an interesting environment for the cats um, for two months or more. So it's been involved. I bet that's something you actually, a, a couple of months even ago, someone had said, oh, you'll be designing an environment for cats, probably would have said, no, I don't think well, so. Well, it started out with a, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the other shoe to drop, but it never did, actually. And, and it's, uh, we go live with it tomorrow, or uh, Monday. Okay. So we'll be, bring my a, iPad into work on yeah, Monday. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a Frisky's Facebook page. <laughs> fun. You must get around. <laughs> Well, I've been here before, and I believe wow. you have, too. I have indeed, yeah. <laughs> it's always fun coming out and getting to with all the art directors. Were you, actually, were you at Comic-Con this year? I was. That's so... You know, I was really inspired by you talking about creating the sails, using the entrails and the blood to get the color of the sails. <laughs> uh, that was a, it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. So we wanted to make Blackbeard. It was really fun. Came on board, and Jerry Bruckheimer, who was a really great collaborative producer, said, I want to make... 
make Blackbeard the most beat pirate that's been any in, in any of the Pirates of the Caribbean. So I want skulls, I want blood, and I just went, okay, I'm the guy. And so we uh, we just emblazoned his ship with, with gold and skulls and made the sails as though the sails just looked like they were on the floor of a butcher shop for a hundred years. And we just had a blast with them. What, what actually gave you that idea? Have you worked with material like that before? Well, it was interesting. We were going to take his, his ship and make it a very elegant ship and put on a lot of gilded moldings. And I was doing, you know, very traditional moldings with it. And when Mr. Bruckheimer said that to me, I remembered going to a bone church outside of Prague where the entire church was decorated in bones. Wow. Leg bones, skulls, ribs. And I went, you know what? If you were to gold leaf these bones, from a distance they would just look like beautiful Baroque moments. But as you got close to them, you'd realize it's skulls and jaws and backbones of all of his victims. So when I pitched that idea, Rob, I did that idea to Rob Marshall and to Jerry Bruckheimer, they were both thrilled and let me run with it. And then everything else just developed. If you're trying to make it look like a ship you hadn't seen before, and I had never seen red sails on a ship. Normally ship sails are tans and browns or getting old and dark and black. The idea of doing blood red sails was just something exciting. And when I brought the idea up at a big meeting, Terry Russio, who wrote the previous three Pirates of This went, oh my god, I've always wanted to have a ship with red sails. Hmm. What are you working on now? I am the luckiest guy in the entire world. Are you sitting down? I'm designing the no. Academy Awards. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure you can't speak a whole lot about that, but... It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be a real celebration of the movies. So I always felt if I was lucky enough to be able to design the Academy Awards, everything I built should be about film and about cinema, and that's what you're going to see on February 26th. Wow. Well, that's very exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah. I feel like a kid in candy school. Hopefully they'll let you come backstage and talk to the press room. Very good. See you there. Have a good time.